Similarly, when you have to know, get your train reservation done or airline reservation done, again, no, you visit the reservation counter. But there has been a tremendous change in way these things have been conducted over the past few years. It is purely because of the fact that our information and communication technology has revolution, revolutionized. It has expanded. And as a result of this technical revolution, what has happened is that new ways of conducting the business, the new ways of doing all these activities have got generated. And I'm sure many of you you know, during the COVID time last year, when we were all forced to be at our home places, we took the advantage of doing online activities, whether it was education, whether it was banking, whether it was insurance, or whether it was you no know, buying of lot many products. So this is exactly what we would be learning in today's lesson, that is on the modern modes of business. So this lesson for you would comprise of the various modes of business, facility of internet and its uses, the concept benefits and limitations of e-commerce and e-business, the stages involved in the trading process in an online transaction and the application of e-commerce you know, such as e-banking, e-ticketing, e-advertising and e-post. So let us now start with the various modes of you no know, conducting the business. Now, as I just told you that whenever we have to buy something, what we do is as buyers, you no know, either we visit a shop or we go to the market. Similarly, for conducting our banking services, we visit a bank or for getting our railway reservation done, or for the purpose of you know, uh, getting our insurance policies, or for trading online, we actually physically go to that place and do and conduct all these activities. But not anymore, because of the fact that now the buyers can stay back at home, they can be at the convenience of their place, and at the same time, do all these activities conveniently sitting at their home place with either a mobile phone or through a laptop or a computer. So what is important here is that you don't have to actually or physically you no know, visit that place to do all these activities. So what we are now on to is what is referred to as a virtual market. So this has been made possible purely because of the fact that there has been a tremendous expansion of our ICT, the information, communication and technology, or because of the fact the technology and the internet has broadened itself to such vast areas that we are conducting all these activities on a virtual mode. So virtual mode means when the activities are conducted or are carried out electronically. And this electronic carrying of all the business and the associated activities is what is referred to as a e-business. Now another important thing to mention here would be the fact that all these you know, e-business and electronic mode of activities is purely made possible because of internet. And I'm very much sure that you, know, you are already aware and are using all the internet services on your mobiles or on, on your laptops. So internet or net or what we also refer to as www, the world wide web. So it's a wide spectrum of you no know, computer networks through which the users at any computer can access the information from other computers and it could relate to whatever activities and whatever topics that you can think about. So if you want to access information on history, political science, economics, government, you just have to simply know what we call it as Google it out. So it's because of the fact that there is a wide web system of the computer network which is internet is making us 
possible that we are able to access all the information by using the, uh, the internet facility. And it is because of the internet or the world wide web that also now the business or the commerce related activities and all the associated allied activities of the business can take place in a virtual market, in a virtual world. And it is purely because of the fact that internet is making this and is a major revolution in the past few years. Now, let us proceed further and understand that how the internet helps its users. So you can browse the information on any topic through the World Wide Web. And again, you, we and me have been using uh, you know, the internet to get information on whatever topic you can think about. We can also read newspapers from all the leading newspapers, agencies and television channel. We can exchange messages using uh, email and other uh, form of uh, communication through the use of internet. We can search databases of not only certain topics, but also no related to individuals or private organizations or uh, government. So whatever information or database that we require for an agency or for an indiv individual, we can easily access those information using the internet. Another important usage is of transferring files, pictures and animations. And of course, you know, we can communicate with one another either through the chatting mode or by sending emails. So you can very well imagine for yourself that how wide internet is and how you no, know, it has kind of entered into everyone's life and is making uh, us access to so many uh, information and so much uh, activities by being available at the comfort of your home or at comfort, comfort of any place that you are it. So you don't have to actually physically be at that place, neither you have to travel to that place to get that information or to access uh, uh, any kind of uh, thing that you require related to uh, whatever activity that comes into your mind. You can easily use the internet and get so much and uh, you can do so much uh, using the internet. Now, let us move forward and understand what is electronic commerce. Now, as I said that internet is purely a means or a mechanism which is you no know, helping us with electronic commerce or e-commerce or e-business and giving us access to so much activities and so much uh, information. So, let us now understand that what is electronic commerce. Now, commerce, first of all, we understand it's simply a process of you no know, buying and selling. And it also includes all the other associated and allied activities like banking, insurance, transportation, communication, etc. Now, when we use the word e-commerce or electronic commerce, it actually refers to this entire process of commerce when it is done electronically or with the help of electronic devices using computer and the interconnected telecommunication network, then we label this or when then we call it as electronic commerce. So you can do online shopping on it, you can do online trading on it, you can do online advertising on it. So, so many activities which were you no know, traditionally conducted through a physical form or through a physical manner when the same allied activities and the uh, buying and selling of goods is done on an electronic mechanism then we call it as electronic commerce now there are you no know, three different forms of e-commerce it can be b2b it can be b2c or it can be c2c so, B2B is business to business. Now, what does B2B means? B2B means when the business of a manufacturer is conducted with the supplier of a material or wherein then an interaction of a manufacturer takes place between a wholesaler or the interaction takes place between a wholesaler and a retailer. So, here the two parties involved or the two links that are involved is business to business. Now, whenever this kind of an exchange 
or an interaction that takes place between a manufacturer or a wholesaler, between the suppliers or an, the retailer through the electronic means, then this becomes the business to business form of e-commerce. The second form is when the interaction takes place between B to C, that is business to consumer. So that is the consumer here we are referring to as the, the final end consumer or the person who is actually you know, buying the products either to be consumed by themselves or you know, for the purpose of you know, uh, giving it as a gift to someone else. So the final end user here is the consumer. So the two ends on this part is a business. So the businessman can be in the form of a, uh, a retailer or a wholesaler or a manufacturer but the final end is the user is the consumer. So business to consumer or B2C is a type of e-commerce that establishes an electronic relationship between business at one end and the final consumer at the uh, other. And we have so many examples you know, related to B2C. All these you know, sites from where uh, you buy goods like Flipkart or Snapdeal or Mintra or in fact Swiggy, all these are examples of B2C. Then the third is C2C. C2C means consumer to consumer. So many a times, no, at both the ends, you have consumers who are dealing with goods in which there is no established uh, market mechanisms, like for the purpose of you no know, reselling your books or reselling your you no know, used items or household equipments, like you have your uh, OLX or you have eBay. All these are categorized under C2C. So at both the ends, when you have consumers, consumer on one side and at the final end also the consumer on the other end, then this refers to as a C2C. So through the electronic you no. Know, commerce, we can have these three different forms of B2B, B2C and C2C. Now, there is another term which is very often used that is e-business or electronic business. Now, many a times no electronic commerce or e-commerce and e-business are used as synonyms to one another. But there is a difference between e-commerce and e-business. E-business is a more wider term because it incorporates and includes e-commerce and plus all the e-business functions. So that means it is going to include all these three forms of business that we just discussed. So B2B, B2C and C2C plus also the interrelated activities that are conducted within the business itself. So it is also going to have the e-business functions related to accounting, finance, personal, administration, maintenance, etc. So within the organization, you no know, sometimes one department may require you no know, certain assistance from the other department. And when this kind of a reciprocal relationship that exists between the departments of the same business or of the other businesses also, then then this this entire uh, uh, you know, form is referred to as electronic business. So what we need to understand here is that e-business is a much much wider term than electronic business, uh, sorry electronic commerce and e-business comprises of e-commerce plus all the e-business functions. So there are no lot of advantages associated with using e-commerce and e-business. So with respect to the benefits of e-commerce, now let us understand that what are the likely you know, uh, merits or the advantages which e-business or e-commerce offers to its users. The first is it is wider acceptability. Now, with the help of you no know, well-developed computerized networking system or simply the internet, the business now can operate not only at the national level but also at the global level. And as a result, the buyers and sellers sitting across at any part of the world can interact with one another. 
So sitting here, if I want to buy a product, you know, which is being sold in Europe or USA or Russia, I don't have to actually go and visit that place. I can easily you know, buy whatever I require by the sellers online and at the comfort of my place, I can place the order and get the product. And similarly, buyers also, if they are located at different places within the world, can easily sell their products to different users or different uh, uh, no, uh, buyers to different places. Second is, it provides for an improved customer service. Now, what happens is that e-commerce no, enables a company to open up the business whenever the customer needs it. It is like a 24 into 7. So it is at the convenience of the customer. The information can be updated anytime. It becomes easier to even you know, uh, launch a complaint. So you don't have to you know, follow any kind of particular set of timetable you know, when you have to actually visit the place or when you have to, if there is a, a, a I mean, if supposing the product is de delivered to you and you're not very satisfied with the product, so you don't have to you know, wait for the next day to uh, uh, let the store open or let the office open and then actually go and launch your complaint there. You again know by use of the uh, e-business facilities at any point of time, 24 into 7, you can uh, no, write to the, uh, the, the people for the purpose of uh, uh, any con uh, complaint or any kind of grievance that you have. So you know, this makes the, the communication between the buyer and seller very instant and very easy. The third is uh, the advantage of a short transaction time. Now, since the producers are able to cut short the distribution channel because there is a direct link between the wholesaler or the manufacturer with the consumer. So as a result, the distribution channel, no, it comes down. So because of the distribution channel, there is a direct, the, the channel, no, it gets stringed. So as a result of that, there is a direct contact with the consumer and the total time that is required from placing to order uh, to uh, receiving your supplies also gets very reduced. Then another advantage is cost saving and low prices. Now, what happens is that if you go and buy the products offline in the traditional form, that means you go to a shop or you visit a market, what happens is that the goods are you no know, well displayed. Of course, you know, when they are well displayed, you require the staff and you require all the other maintenance expenses also to take care of the display of goods. So as a result, you know, this increases your administrative cost, it increases your maintenance cost. But herein, there is no need to display the goods or there is no need to maintain even the large stocks of goods as and when you get the order online, you can immediately uh, supply it. So as a result, you save so much cost which in a traditional form uh, uh, cannot be handled and as a result it adds on to the cost of the customer. So in the long run if you are you know, uh, buying and selling goods online it saves a lot of cost and as a result of that the customer at the other end has to pay a reduced price. So it results in uh, low cost prices and a saving which is beneficial to both the buyer as well as the seller. Then it leads to enlarged business and profits. Needless to say, when the costs are reduced, when the prices are reduced, automatically the profits generated for the seller is higher than what they can actually uh, do it in a traditional form. And because of the online presence, and as I just told you that no, what happens is because of your online business, you are selling your goods to all the buyers that are sitting across globally. So you're not targeting only a certain part or a certain market. Your target here is the entire globe. And because of this you know, capturing of new markets or capturing of uh, uh, the buyers sitting across the entire globe, you tend to earn more profits because your market share also tends to increase. And Last is the convenience to customer. 
So you have large access to the number of suppliers. So you have so many choices that if supposing I, if I want to buy uh, uh, products or goods related to groceries, I have so many options from grofers to big bazaar to so many other uh, you no know, online uh, sellers wherein no, I have a wider choice, I can always compare the prices, I can compare the quality of the products and whosoever no, offers me the same products at a much reduced prices with a better quality, I can order from those buyers. So in a way it is also no, convenient and uh, helpful to the customer. But despite the fact that it offers us so many you know, advantages and merits, there are still limitations of e-commerce and e-business. The very first limitation is that it lacks personal touch with the customers. So here in now the customer is himself or herself browsing through the various sites to identify the various products they require, then doing a comparative analysis of you know, which online site is offering a better product in terms of cost or in terms of uh, uh, the quality. So the personal touch with your buyers is missing. Now, especially you know, if you have to buy, let's say, jewelry or clothes, then in that case, that feel of the cloth or actually looking at the jewelry and uh, buying it, uh, all these things are missing out in a virtual mode or in an online uh, business. So this becomes a disadvantage in case of many, many products. Similarly, you know, the physical delivery of the goods actually takes a lot of time in certain cases. So it is not that you place the order online and immediately it will be given to you. But in case of a traditional form of business, if you want to buy a product, you go to a shop or you go to a market, you pay the price and you immediately get the deliver of the goods. Here the case is not so because you place an order and it might take from days to certain weeks depending upon the nature of the product to be delivered at your home. So there can be a delay in delivery also which again becomes a limitation to your e-commerce. Then another disadvantage associated is that the return of faulty goods which have been bought online may become problematic sometimes and again it is a time consuming exercise. So if you order a product and you are not very satisfied with the product because of any reason and you want to return it back. So again the returning itself is a time consuming process and it may not be immediately returned. So again you lose on the time frame of no returning the product and getting your uh, uh, no, whatever amount that you've paid for it, getting it uh, reimbursed back. Then it is not suitable for non-routine buying where no, usually when you want to get advice from your friends or your family members because many a times no, where we buy durable products or products which involve a huge amount, we generally take the advice of our friends or our family members or sometimes no, let's say you go and buy a car. So you generally take your family members along to select the brand and to select the model of the uh, car. So for these kind of items, then online business to an extent will not be of much help because here you are not seeking any kind of guidance from uh, anyone. And then the most important limitation is that online transactions are prone to a number of risk which can be financial risk, which can be psychological losses, it can be reputational losses. So although it serves us a number of advantages, but then of course there are number of uh, you know, risk involved also, especially in the financial risk which are tremendous and it can lead to misappropriation of your money, it can lead to misuse uh, of your uh, funds etc. So, you have to be you know, very cautious while doing online transactions or buying goods online. Now let us proceed further and understand that how the transaction takes place online. So what is the transaction process involved? Now there are five steps for the transaction process or for 
your online transaction to take place on a site or through the e-business model. So it involves search, order, payment, delivery and after sale service. So the first step in the transaction process is search. So search means that you want to identify the appropriate supplier or the prospective vendor from whom you are going to buy the product. So there can be various websites from where you are going to buy the product. So let us take a small break here and we will come back and restart with the transaction process. कोविड 19 यानी कोरोना वायरस देश एवं संपूर्ण विश्व में व्याप्त विषाणु जन्य समस्या लाखों लोग इस संक्रमण की चपेट में इसका निदान है जागरूकता के साथ हम और आप स्वयं कोरोना वायरस के इस संक्रमण से संपूर्ण भारतवर्ष भी एक विकट स्वास्थ्य की परिस्थितियों से जूझ रहा है भारत सरकार द्वारा गांव से शहरों तक व्यापक जांच उपचार और विभिन्न नैदानिक व्यवस्थाएं की गई हैं, लेकिन अभी हमें करना है इससे बचाव बचाव है आपस में दो गज की दूरी रखें, मास्क जरूर लगाएं, हाथों को बार बार साबुन से धोएं और हाँ आरोग्य सेतु ऐप पर लॉगिन अवश्य करें घर पर रहें और एन की स्व अध्ययन सामग्री से पढ़ते रहे आपके लिए पीएम ई विद्या पर टीवी रेडियो वाहिनी और मुक्त विद्या वाणी पर ऑडियो कार्यक्रमों का प्रसारण भी एन द्वारा किया जा रहा है आपसे एक ही अनुरोध है जब भी छींके मुंह और नाक को ढकना ना भूलें, भीड़ भाड़ में जाने से बचें और सामाजिक दूरी का पालन करें और एक बात जब तक वैक्सीन नहीं आती तब तक मास्क को ही वैक्सीन समझे साफ रहे स्वच्छ रहें और स्वस्थ रहें। दो गज दूरी मास्क है जरूरी किसी भी आपदा की स्थिति में संपर्क करें टोल फ्री नंबर वन जीरो सेवन फाइव जीरो वन वन टू थ्री नाइन सेवन एट जीरो फोर सिक्स ई मेल करें एन सी ओ वी टू जीरो वन नाइन एट जी ओ वी डॉट इन प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने जीवन ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को करने
कहीं पड़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो कभी पड़े हम कहीं पड़े वे विषय की लोच से युक्त हो मित्रों हम उठे और जागे ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने Welcome back, learners. So we were talking about the modern modes of business, and under that, we were discussing the transaction process. So let us proceed further and discuss how the transaction of an online order takes place. So these are the various steps to the transaction process. We start with the first step, that is search. now for making the purchase the prospective customer has to find an appropriate vendor or a supplier from where you can know buy your product so by browsing through the various websites using your search engine you can identify the various websites of your online purchase let us suppose you are going to buy groceries so you have to go to your browser from the search engine and search the various websites which can offer you the groceries so generally the available sites are through the grofers or through big basket or through amazon amazon or through the flipkart the uh, groceries or jio so you find out that finally from which website you are going to make your order from second is once you've selected the site you are now going to identify the products by browsing through the various you no know, uh, listed products on to that site which you require so once the vendor has been identified the now the goods need to be identified and they once what you do is you keep on you no know, adding them to your virtual e cart so just like in the traditional form you no know, you take your basket along and you keep on adding whatever products that you require so under this you have what we call it as a virtual e cart and you keep on adding the the various different uh, groceries or whatever products you require uh, from the site then once your order is ready now you are going to make the payment now the payment can be of different forms so either no you can make the payment by using a debit card or a credit card or sometimes there is also uh, an availability of cash on delivery cod or by net banking so you enter the vendor details and the amount and then finally the payment would be made by any of the mechanism or means that you want to make the payment so once the payment has been made for your order the delivery comes at the designated place for which the address was already filled up 
at the time of no registering with uh, the uh, vendor. So, once the payment has been assured by the supplier, they arrange for the delivery of the goods as per the instructions that have been given by the buyer with related to the time slot that you have selected during which the delivery has to be done or the place where the delivery has to be done. So, all these instructions are given uh, by the buyer and the delivery takes place. And the last is the after sales service. So, many a times now what happens is that you no, know, you might receive certain products which are damaged or are faulty or are not as per your liking or choice and you need to return it back. So, again there is an after sale service mechanism to be followed with the vendor or with the supplier and you uh, place your uh, uh, you know, whatever uh, query or whatever uh, thing that is there onto the site and it is uh, taken back by the vendor and the supplier and they either replace it or the return back your money. And even for items like you know, if you buy certain durable items, there is a provision for warranty or maintenance. So, all these things are again you know, uh, uh, to be given as a feedback or as a complaint to your vendor or to your supplier and they are taken well care by the supplier and the vendor. So, this is how the transaction of an online purchase is done. Now, the next aspect is with respect to the precautions for security. Now, since there is no face to face interaction at the time of buying or selling the product or even at the time of making the payment. So, at both the ends, the buyer also and the seller also have to be very, very cautious in terms of the fact that both of them are authenticated. They are both authentic. There is actually a deal between the two parties involved and for the purpose, no lot of security arrangements are done on an online transaction, which could be through passwords or authentication or encryption, digital signature or through third party fact. Now, we start with password. Now, when you do an online shopping, the first thing that is required as a buyer is that you have to register yourself with the online vendor. So, that means you have to open an account with them which wherein you, know, you provide all your uh, details and they provide the vendor in turn you know, provides you for a login. So, that no unauthorized person can enter your designated uh, registered account and also now the, the seller helps in identifying that the purchaser is authentic or no whatever information that is provided is with from the authorized person. So, it is always password protected. So, whenever you redo a transaction from the same website, you would already have an account and the password with you. So, that no, no unauthorized person can use that particular uh, domain area for the purpose of doing any kind of uh, fraud in that. Then there is authentication. So, that means whenever no, you uh, open an account with the, uh, the, the supplier or your vendor, the vendor immediately sends you an authenticated messages. Now, many a times you must have seen that if you open an account with an, or with an online uh, uh, site, they will send you an SMS or you know, they will try and verify your mobile number or they will send you an OTP uh, to your email and uh, identify that the person is actually a valid person or not. So, that is authentication and this is all being done you know, to identify that no kind of misappropriation or fraud, uh, fraudulent activities takes place in the online transaction. Then there is something called as encryption. So, encryption refers to the conversion of your data into a code so that it can cannot be read by other users. So, uh, for this purpose no, uh, they use an electronic encrypted uh, algorithm and which is composed of binary numbers and the, the alternative is a private uh, key system. So, again this is done for the purpose you know, to ensure that uh, the password is uh, kind of protected and uh, there is a 
code which would be used only by the uh, user and no one else is uh, no one else has an access to it and as a result no one else can use it then digital signature is another uh, way of you no know, protecting your security so just like in a physical form we actually sign the documents so here since we are not physically present so the signatory or the signatures that are done are through a digital uh, mode so this can be used to authenticate the sender of the message and check also the integrity so that no no again no uh, kind of no alteration or no kind of misappropriation takes place whenever a, a transaction between the buyer and the seller is done and then there is a trusted third party so what happens is that in order to uh, ensure that security to the uh, transaction a third party which is a trusted by both the uh, the vendor as well as the uh, customer so that in case of any kind of dispute arises between them so there is a third party which can help them to settle their uh, dispute so the online transactions although no uh, they encompass a lot of no uh, frauds and lot of uh, uh, misuse or misappropriations so it is very necessary that a security check must happen at every place to authenticate between the buyer and the seller and when you do online transaction you have to be very very cautious while doing it so that no there is no misuse of your hard earned money now e-commerce has other several applications also so apart from doing an online business we have you no know, several other applications which can relate to e-banking it can relate to e-advertising it can relate to uh, e-post so let us now understand number of other applications of uh, e-commerce which could be through uh, online like providing you with online electronic newspapers it could be through online no stra uh, stock trading or stock exchanges um, online advertising online or e ticketing e taxation e banking e post so there are numerous amount of activities which are you no know, based on the electronic mode so first let us discuss about e banking and i am very much sure you know how the banking transactions takes place you go and deposit money you withdraw money you open fixed deposit you get your uh, pass books you uh, go and check your accounts so nowadays all these activities and transactions which you can think for the banking uh, uh, organization can be conducted just by a click of your mouse or just through your uh, mobile and this has been possible because of the fact that now we are using electronic banking or e banking so e banking is doing all the banking transactions electronically now this can involve tele banking so tele banking is banking through telephonic means or using your uh, mobile so a customer is given a password which is generally refers to as a t pin what is a t pin telephonic personal identification number through which you can access your account you can do net banking you can uh, uh, withdraw money you can issue a demand draft so again what is important is you don't have to go to the bank to do all these transactions just through your mobiles or through your telephones by uh, using a t pin which is a kind of password protected you can use all these transactions sitting or uh, from any uh, place so physical presence of going to the bank is not required similarly internet banking so internet banking is web based banking or online banking which allows the user to do all the various financial transactions through the internet so your deposits transfers uh, online payment of bills all this can be done electronically by using your laptops and your consu uh, your computers that is referred to as internet banking then atm any time money so atm is again no a very very popular uh, form of electronic banking which no enables us to withdraw money it enables us to deposit money 
and it also enables us to you know, uh, make payments online or even if we are going for uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, going to uh, physically go to a shop or a market to buy the products, we don't have to actually carry cash. We can use this magnetic plastic card and make payments. So that is what is an ATM money, that is anytime money. Next is a debit card. So one of another important you know, uh, ways of doing electronic banking is through a debit card. So debit card is basically an electronic card that can be used conveniently for making payments and it is issued to all the customers who have either a saving account or a current account. So whenever I have to make payments at different places. Uh, I don't have to again carry any hard cash with me. I can use these debit cards which are issued to me by the banks and they are linked to my current or saving account and uh, for making my purchases or for making my payments I just have to simply insert the debit card which is again password uh, protected through a pin and I can use for the purpose of making the uh, the payment. So you can know very well imagine that you no know, making payments has become so much simpler and so much easier with uh, these uh, facilities and also you no know, you don't you are you are not carrying cash. So you don't have to be uh, really worried that you no know, you're carrying so much cash in your pockets and uh, there is a chances of uh, theft or losing out anywhere. Then credit card is also you know, something very similar to a debit card. It also is an electronic form of uh, a card which is issued by the banks or the financial institution and it allows the card holders to borrow funds or make payments. But here we are using the word credit. So it is allowing the, uh, the uh, card holders to uh, uh, no, make payments uh, no, when, when uh, you are taking a credit from the uh, banks. So herein it is not necessary that you have to have a, uh, a bank account. What is important is that no, the financial institution and the banks when they issue you a, a credit card, they would be verifying your credit worthiness through the crystal rating and then they can issue you a credit card and it also serves the same uh, purpose as we do it for debit card that you know we can uh, make payments online or we can make payments uh, uh, on a physical uh, form but we don't have to carry your hard cash. Now the next thing that we are going to discuss is that is again related to another form of application of uh, e-commerce that is e-ticketing or electronic ticketing. Electronic ticketing refers to purchasing your railways or airways tickets online or booking through telephone. So again the important aspect is that traditionally you know, whenever we used to travel by air or by railways you, we actually went to the reservation counter and you no, know, we booked our tickets. So here in through e-ticketing you don't have to actually go to the uh, the counter to get your reservation done again by the use of internet or through your mobiles you can you know, easily book your tickets and you save on a lot of paper because you do not require it in a printed form it can be carried in your mobiles and you no know, uh, whenever the person demands it you can show it on your uh, uh, mobiles so it saves a lot of time it saves a, it saves a lot of uh, effort as well as the cost. Then e-advertising is another popular form of application of uh, uh, your e-commerce when in no uh, e-advertising or electronic advertising or internet advertising using uses the internet to deliver the promotional marketing messages. So unlike our print form of you no know, magazines or uh, newspapers wherein you know, we get uh, the information about new products through this means here we are using the electronic advertising mode of communicating the message uh, across to display our products or to display our services and many a times you must have often seen while you no know, uh, browsing through your uh, social networking sites maybe twitter or facebook or instagram a lot of advertisements keep on propping up so that is what is e advertising and herein the best part is it is to the viewers uh, choice that whether they want to see the advertisement or they don't want to see the 
uh, advertisement. So if you're not interested in the advertisement, you can always uh, skip the advertisement also. Then e-trading at stock exchanges is another important application associated with uh, e-commerce. So e-trading means electronic or online trading that involves buying and selling of your financial securities which involve your bonds or uh, shares and debentures and it was established by OTCI and now the, the uh, National Stock Exchange and the Bombay Stock Exchange has also now completely shifted over to the online trading uh, for your uh, stock broking etc. and it, it provides us with lot many advantages. So what we have learnt today is with respect to uh, the modern means of doing uh, business and how it is convenient and how it is you now expanding its horizons both for the buyers and the sellers then the stages involved for conducting online transactions and you no know, the application of e-commerce which is not only limited to uh, know the electronic transfer between the buyer and the seller but also expanded itself to e-banking e-ticketing e-advertising so i'm sure you must have got number of doubts clear and this chapter would be uh, really helpful uh, to you in the future. Thank you so much.